Today I would like to present you some case studies on the work that we have done on developing immobilized enzyme for <coughs> pharma, cosmetic and, pharma <coughs> and food applications. The first case study is the immobilized glucomidase, sorry, <coughs> for the food industry. When we started this project, the need of the market was to look for a weak uh, base hydrophilic carrier for enzyme immobilization to be applied in food industry. This carrier is used in industry to make immobilization of... Uh, can I have a pointer? Okay. For immobilization on different enzymes for uh, sugar industry, like glucamylase, amylase. And the product available on the market is a polyphenolic weak base material with a regular shape, as you can see here. The material to be used in food industry has uh, strict reg uh, regulatory uh, demands, so the polymer should comply with the Council of Europe Regulation RISAP 2004. The customer were complaining about batch-to-batch -batch variability for this product, non-spherical bits, so they look for a much better product to be packing columns in about 1.53 cubic meters. So we started looking at this material and we we tested other materials, quite hydrophilic, as the amino resins with uh, amino functional groups on a, a short or a long spacer, with different porosity, high and, uh, and small porosity, with, that could match the, the existing resins used in the food industry. Large particle size because it's used in columns. Then we did some studies in collaboration with the customer, so it's a uh, food uh, customer producing sugar derivatives. So we did, first of all, a mobilization using absorption on the resins. We tested all the resins comparing to the commercial product and as you can see, all, other, all the amino resins works quite well. The resin that we choose are spherical, so optimal to be used in packed columns. Then we, we tested also another uh, possibility to use covalent immobilization of this enzyme after pre-activation with glutaraldehyde. And again, compared to the polyphenolic resin available on the market, you can see that our activities are quite good. The activity that we did is a, a standard uh, laboratory uh, hydrolysis of a um, colorimetric compound, but the customer is testing an industrial test on different substrate, obtaining 40% better performance than the polyphenolic. So, this procedure using covalent immobilization can save to the customer the cost of regeneration because if they use in a column, they have to regenerate cycle after cycle. So this product now is under test by the customer in a 1.5 cubic meter column. Another case study I would like to, tr uh, to introduce you is the immobilized transaminase for the pharma industry. This project was done in collaboration with the very well-known company in producing enzyme, Codexis. They have developed a special case for the production of cetagliptin, which is commercially now from uh, Merck. So they have developed the enzyme after, and after 11 rounds of evolution. The enzyme is now able to accept very high substrate concentration and can work in organic solvent. So the enzyme has been developed and with codexis, uh, the enzyme is able to accept also large substrate, different from the original substrate, so it can have a broad applicability also to other pharmaceutical compounds. So it allows to produce amino caralamines from ketones. So with codexis, we decided to develop easy kits for uh, using the lab for screening immobilized transaminase to be used in organic solvent or water media. So what kind of substrate, uh, what kind of, uh, sorry. So we started from a family of 10 transaminases belonging to different parent families, so with different molecular weight, but we have similar, so maximum 50 kilo Dalton. We tested against a substrate, which is a 3-hydroxyacetophenone. And the, then the decision was, let's go for covalent or absorption immobilization for food industry. Of course, the advantages of absorption is that you get always high absorption, as it was uh, reported by Merck, uh, Matt Truppo. So you get higher activity in pure organic solvent. But the advantages of covalent immobilization is that it's more versatile. You can use in water, biphasic, or organic solvent. It has usually higher stability. So for 
Somebody that is not familiar with immobilized enzyme is the best tool to start and is easy to recover. So we decided to go for the covalent immobilization. And then we, st we started a particle size selection. So what kind of particle size is better for the uh, pharmaceutical application? So as we saw in the case, previous case study with the glucamylase in 1.5 cubic meter columns, you need to use a high particle size, so 300, 700 microns, or even higher to avoid the back pressure problems. In pharma applications, of course, smaller particle size gives higher activity. This is a nice example showing you the effect of particle size. So the same immobilized enzyme screen in different particle size. You see that the activity rise up when you decrease the particle size. So larger particle size is optimal for decreasing back pressure in packet configuration, but small particle size gives you higher activity. So based on this evaluation, so we decided to go for the small particle size, so 150, 300 micron. There are different options to use immobilized enzyme in industry. The column pack bed is optimal for production in continuous, as I, as I showed the case study of the glucamylase. So it's a preferred configuration by food industry, which is called continuous flow chemistry. So it's used in, in food industry from ages. Large particle size, a preferred uniform particle size is, a, I think you talk about a jetting technology. So the, the jetting technology can be applied uh, to produce a uniform particle size. Then there is the fluidized bed, which is optimal for production in continuous lower, produ lower um, product produ production, so easy separation of precipitated product, but is an expensive setup. So there is a nice uh, example of a bubble column reactor developed from uh, Professor Andreas Lise, which is now in production, but is used for high value compounds. And then there is the batch reactor. It's, it's typically a preferred configuration by pharma because there are, there are a lot of batch reactors in pharmaceutical industry. And in batch reactor, of course, it's better to use a small particle size so you can get higher activity and no problem of filtration. So here we, we have screened different uh, enzyme carriers, epoxy or amino resins, all for covalent immobilization. So epoxy uh, resins are more hydrophobic in this case or uh, hydrophilic but with different porosities or amino resins where you need to do pre-activation, all for covalent immobilization. So you can see here the, the activity with all the enzyme carriers, what's higher with the epoxy, metacrylate, 39, that correspond to a very low pore uh, por diameter. The same if we compare the amino resins with short and long spacer, we always get higher activity with a small uh, porosity. Again, here, we get better activity with lower porosity. So small pore diameter is preferred. The enzyme is maximum 50 kilo dantod, and typical substrates are quite small. They are not very big molecules. So there is not a, 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 a strong effect of the, long spa of the spacer. So the epoxy is the best option. Here, to conclude, here on the transaminase, here is the comparison of the uh, activity of the immobilized transaminase on the epoxy in black with all the enzymes compared to the activity of the lyophilized enzyme, so the native enzyme, with the 3 hydroxyacetophenone So you, what you can see is that apart from some cases here, generally the activity of the immobilized transaminase on epoxy resin gives the same activity as the native enzyme. So this means that the resin is not giving any diffusional uh, limitation. From the regulatory point of view, what is needed from the industry, this, uh, this immobilized transaminase will be used in water, but can be also, also in uh, organic solvents. So there is the nice example of uh, Merck using this uh, uh, immobilized enzyme in uh, isopropyl acetate. So what is what is requiring the, uh, the pharma industry is the uh, detection of the leachable and extractable in the solvent that will be used in the reaction. So we need to avoid any contamination of the final drug with the polymer contaminants. These steps of, with the immobilized enzyme comes really in a later stage of production of the drug 
So there are not so many purification steps after, so it's important to get a quite pure product. As a last example, I would like to uh, introduce you the work that we have done for the cosmetic industry, working on development of immobilized lipase. So the immobilized B it's a lipase from Candida Antarctica B, is used quite widely in the industrial production of emollient esters for cosmetic purposes, such as the Miristil Miristate, which is a, an ester uh, of uh, Miristil alcohol and uh, Miristic acid. The advantages of using <coughs> the, uh, an immobilized enzyme against the chemical uh, esterification is, of course, the higher regioselectivity, so quite pure product. So you don't have formation of byproducts, and byproducts in esterification typically are color compounds, and nobody wants to have a cream that is yellow. Everybody wants a white cream. So it's Im very important the high regioselectivity of the enzyme and the purity of the product. <coughs> so what was the need of the market? Was to a mechanically stable carrier for the mobilization of lipase calbi with a target activity of 10,000 PLU per gram. Customers were complaining about the existing product for the mechanical low stability when using steel batch reactor. So there is a commercially mobilized calbi on the market, which is based on a DVB acrylate with a very low surface area. You can see 74 square meter per uh, gram. Uh, which is optimal for the absorption of this uh, uh, lipase, which is quite small, in, uh, um, is a 27 kilodalton. So we develop this ECR1030, which is uh, a resin suitable for lipase immobilization. So it's a divinyl benzene acrylate with a very low surface area, again 75 and with an increased mechanical stability. So we work a lot on increasing the mechanical stability of the polymer and the difference given by the porosity. So you see that we have decreased the porosity to about 250. And this gives a better mechanical stability of the resin. So what are the performances of this new carrier that we have developed? So the carrier is uh, allowed to give a very high activity, so 10,000 PLU per gram. You can see our study that we did on different loadings. So from 10 to 50 kilo units per gram. At 25, we are able to reach the 10,000 units that are the target for the commercial product. Of course, the activity depends on the enzyme loading. The mechanical stability was, is the great advantage of this resin. This is a test uh, of the, the, the resin uh, with the uh, attrition test. So the resin is... Uh, tested in, uh, um, in a um, bit beater, which allows to uh, measure the formation of fines. So you can measure the formation of fines at 400 mic uh, nanometers, or you can have a visual inspection. So you see that our resin is uh, not giving too much, uh, um, is much better in mechanical stability. So having a good polymer, we have decided to couple with a very good enzyme. So we have developed a product in collaboration with Selecta, a very well-known uh, company making uh, enzymes. So, we, uh, so they, have they have developed an enzyme which has a very high uh, activity, very pure. The mobilized enzyme that we get is very uh, is white compared to the commercial product that which is more brown. So the activity of the immobilized enzyme is very high, so uh, it's uh, clear. The, the polymer is, as I said, styrene metacrylate. Particle size about 300, 710. The product now is in use in com is cosmetic industry, so it's been scaled up the production using this product. Stability is quite long. From the regulatory point of view, there is also the food grade version that we produce with a controlled microbial contamination. So these were the three case studies that I wanted to present. Thank you.